be at Salesforce.com's huge Dreamforce conference where we learn so much about the cloud. There's a tech revolution happening right now, but you'd never know it because the revolution is really about how companies do business. And that just doesn't have the media sex appeal of the next big consumer gadget. It may not seem sexy, but these game changers have produced some incredible gains. That's why tonight I want to go off the tape with a privately held company that's right at the cutting edge of all of this cloud-based innovation. I'm talking about Ken Andy, a cloud-based provider of enterprise resource planning software. When we were at Dreamforce, I got the chance to speak with, with Sandra Kurtzig. That's Ken Andy's legendary founder, chairman, and CEO, who earlier had such incredible success with Ask Computer, a core position of mine for ages when I ran my old hedge fund back in the day. Take a look. Sandy, you're one of my idols. Oh. I remember when I owned Ask from my hedge fund, when I recommended Ask at Goldman, and I want to know why did you come back? You, had, you, you quit on top. <laughs> well, it's true. I did quit on top, and it's, it's, uh, it was very compelling to just stay retired and enjoy the life. But, you know, how often do you get the chance to really reinvent the same market twice? And, and it really is, and right? It, I mean, this is the really new is. ask in some ways. Absolutely. It's, you know, Canandy is really ask on the clouds in a lot of ways, although it's totally new software. Right. I mean, we're totally native. There's not one line of code from the, from the old ask. And there is a motherly aspect to Canandy. Well, there is. I mean, well, of course, Man Man was, ma was right. you know, you know, ma Mama changed to Man Man. And the that names our, of and the this, company. That's right. And now it's Kenandy, which is Ken and Andy, which right. is my son's names. And, you know, so there is that aspect. Now, right. there's always a lot of talk about how companies get started, a garage or whatever. Y you had a conversation with Mark Benioff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this was not on my bucket list. Absolutely was not on my bucket list. And I sort of, I was doing a lot of investing and I said, hey, there's a real paradigm shift. And whenever there's a paradigm shift, it's an opportunity for new companies to, to emerge. And I said, who's going to win in the cloud market? And Mark said, without a, missing a beat, he says, you are. And I said, no, 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 Mark, you don't get it. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, this is not on my bucket list. I'm not starting another company. You're crazy. But of course, we all knew he's crazy anyway. So yes. <laughs> that wasn't adding yes. any information to the, to the conversation. Okay, you understand the business. You could, I could say the game in an excellent book, CEO, that you wrote. Thank you. There's a moment where you want to come public and it's too early. Are yeah. we in that moment now for you and our companies not oh. vi you know, violating the credo of what of that great chapter? Wow, that's a good question. Um, do you know, I think you have, I think it's a crazy market right now. Yes, so, it is. I mean, you know, if you ask for advisors, they would tell you, you know, go when you can. And of course, having the experience of going, pub going public, I know the steps. Um, I think that there's, you know, there's not that many business to business companies out there that right. are really great. So, of course, there's this push to do it. I think it's too early for us, but, you know, definitely we want to do it. And someday, and we wanted to go on the New York this time as opposed to NASDAQ. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> I, I, you have to do something I, I, different this time. People, yeah. I used to like that. I think people at home have to understand business to business, which is why I think we got a great opportunity. Del Monte yes. is a client. Every yes. one of our viewers will know that. Even what? my mother. Yes, my mother, okay. My well, mother, my 97-year-old mother says, you know, you take care of Del Monte. You know, they're a really important company. So go so. ahead, tell us how you take care of them. <laughs> well, the, you know, we're very customer oriented. And w this is an interesting case because we are doing Del Monte corporate, but during the time that we have been working with them, they acquired a company recently, which is a organic pet food company, right. uh, Natural Balance in LA. And they wanted to be up and running on Canandy, order to cash and everything in between. So all their business processes, they wanted to be up and running the day that they closed the deal. Not 90 days or two years, they wanted to be up and running because the most important part of the value of, of getting the return on investment on an acquisition is to get your IT in place. So we were up and running with them on their acquisition the day that it went public. Not I mean, 90 days, me, the day, the day not 90 that days but 90 closed. minutes. 90 minutes, yes. Actually, we had to wait for it to close before we can go live. Okay, could you contrast that with the way it was? What would what would have happened? Well, in the legacy system, typically it takes you nine months, uh, right. you know, to install a system. So, you know, in the in the fast moving pace of all companies right now, agility is so important. I mean, if you can't, you know, that's the biggest thing that I think the cloud lends itself to is agility, is to be able to, uh, with mobility, with collaboration with you know real time analytics right. and real and and real time visibility those are the things that companies need today in order to just compete in a market right because it's so competitive and that's what something like can can Andy and the cloud mm -hmm. allows you to do now a, a lot of people have uh, balked when I've recommended cloud companies they say if you get a miss you'll kill people in CEO 
ask how to miss. What was that like to recover? A miss of a quarter, you mean? Yes. Oh, a <laughs> financial no, a thing. miss of a quarter. Yeah. Well, I think, the, you know, it's really tough because I think in the public markets, you miss the projections by one penny, the market kills you. Uh, you know, I think that it's, and you know, you work very hard and you, you, you haven't done anything different today. You just right. didn't get one order that should have come in that quarter. So I think the whole, you know, the focus on quarterly earnings, especially when it could be one deal, especially when we, our deals are like, you know, half a million dollars right. minimum. One deal will make a difference in a quarter. I think that's a lot of a lot of pressure on, on companies today. But are these companies, uh, there's, look, there was the ask era, okay, yes. then there was an era where we, the, I call it the web van era, right. which was just, we talked eyeballs, yes, we talked yes, yes. the idea of momentum. And now there's now, and a lot of people feel that this era has a lot more to do with the eyeball era than it does with the original ask era. What do you think? Well, I mean, you have to, let's put it in perspective, okay? When the original software was written, I can speak to my market, okay. which is the which is the ERP, the, right. the order Airport. to cash and everything between. Right. It's the back office functionality that runs a company, and it competes with Oracle and SAP. Okay, mm -hmm. when when Man Man was written, Ask, and when Oracle and SAP were written, I mean, there we were still using electric typewriters. Okay, I mean, there wasn't there weren't cell phones. I mean, sort of cell phones, right. and there definitely was not an iPad. Yes. Okay. So the world has really changed, the technology has changed, and I mean, just like you have to go to a museum to see um, a typewriter, electric typewriter, I mean, I'm hoping that in the near future you have to go to a museum to see Oracle and SAP software. Okay, now I want to ask you about, I, you know, I got to go back over that because there, you're the first person who's willing to say that. There's a lot of people here who are either trying to be frenemies with SAP and Oracle, or they somehow fear them. Why are you willing to mention those two names? Well, I mean, they're wonderful companies. And they've been a monopoly for a very, very long time. Yes. Um, and it's just amazing that there's been so many technology transitions and they've still held going. And that's because these kind of applications are very sticky. Yeah, I mean, very and hard to It's to, very hard to approve. replace it. It's very hard to replace it. Right. But you get the most value from an, applica from an uh, ERP application in the first five or, or so years. Once you hit the seventh year, you're not getting value anymore. Okay. And when you look at the mobility, the, you know, building something from ground up that has mobile, that's native to it, that's global, that's you know, multi-currency, that you have one, one database that's one right. connected database as opposed to a lot of modules that yes. tie together. I mean, it's a whole different paradigm. And so I think that there's just an opportunity. I mean, it's not, I, I think Oracle and SAP are great companies, but um, they become banks. Yeah, well, I'm glad to put it out because it's, I think people have to understand that the revolution, there are winners and losers in the revolution. That's my judgment. Mm -hmm. Everyone else has been very, very <laughs> politic. I want to thank, the San, I want to thank Sandy Kurtz, Chairman and CEO of Ken Andy, and so much more.